everything. Now comes that ayah. Ar rijalu qawwamun ala nisa. You know the, the previous ayah, ayah number 32 was a tamheed. Was a preamble to this ayah. Allah has made someone excellent, excel over the other in some respect. That was a general rule. Now this rule is applied to the family life. A man and a woman are equal. They equally share the dignity and the honor of being human beings. But when a woman agrees to be a wife to a man who is now a husband, now they are not equal. That is the difference. Men and women are equal, morally equal, being human beings equal. But now they are entering into an agreement. All human beings are equal, but one is employer, the other one is employee. Are they equal? No. One is the boss, other is the subordinate. Are they equal? No. They are not equal in management. They are equal as human beings. In the same way, males and females are equal. Morally equal. Being human beings, the dignity and honor as human beings equal. But as wives and husbands, not equal. Men are the managers or the controllers or the protectors or the guardians or the rulers over women. Now because this feminism these days, this is a philosophy, it's a culture going from west. It's going very speedily to the east now. Spreading very speedily. And this is based on total equality of men and women in every respect. And this is the biggest blunder that West has created and which has ruined the family system altogether. Broken it. Just shattered it. And we are also proceeding. We are imitating the West and we are also following them. But you know, that is why some of the people, some of the Mufassirin of today, they misinterpret this ayah. What is Kama Allah? I must discuss it in detail. Kama yakumo. Just as you have the example in English. To give, it means something. To give up, means something else. To give in, absolutely different. So these prepositions, they change the meaning. Kama yakumo, to stand up. Stand up erect. Kama yakumo. Kama ila. To rise to do something. Kama ila. He rose and he intended to do something. Kama be. To manage something. To sustain something. Kama ala. To guard something. To control something. To direct something. To rule over something. So even the translation of rulers is not wrong. Because this Kama ala, ala, as I told you, when Allah makes Tawba, it is ala. When a, a man makes Tawba, it is ila. Tubu ilallah. Wallahu yatubu alaykum. So there is a hell of difference between ala and ila. Kama ila, kama be, kama without any preposition, and kama ala. Ar rijalu qawwamun ala nisa. Men are the rulers over women. They are the managers you may call. They are the protectors you may call. They are the guardians you may call. The softest word you may use, but the harshest word is also not wrong. Men are the rulers. Husband is the ruler in the family. He is the head of the family. And if you don't accept the husband as the head of the family, the institution of family will go to dogs. In the same terminology. Now, Quran, you know, it's you know regarding the, the passions and emotions of women, not saying clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made men superior over women. No. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made someone superior over someone. So that is the general rule. But here are rijal qawwamun ala nisa by dint of that by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made one superior over the other. And because of they are spending their money. Because the husband is supporting the wife. 
the husband is the bread earner of the family the head of the family has to support the family when he goes to marry a woman he he offers bridal money dowry why the woman also needs the husband and as husband needs the wife they are equal both the sexes they need the opposite sex why should the man pay the dowry why should the woman pay the dowry no this is the whole system you know it's logical because the man has to have the upper hand because he is to become the qawwam so he must as if he is the seeker and actually woman agrees to have to go into his nikah to into his hisn as we have noted hisn muhsanat going to the into the fortress of that husband that man's nikah and marriage so that that is why because they are spending they give the door door or the dowry or the bridal money that they have to support that, that, that is why now they are rijal they, they are the qawwamun ar rijal wa qawwamun ala nisa bima fadallahu ba'da ma la ba's now this is the basic philosophy of family life in islam unless you accept the basic philosophy under the western influence now you can you can distort the meanings take it this way or that way but it won't help we must accept quran as it is and it is logical absolutely logical fasalihatu now what should be the attitude of a pious woman so the righteous women are those now note what are the qualities of a righteous wife in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala fasalihatu qanitatun they are obedient to their husbands qanitat qurut obedience that is the first quality what does it mean you can argue with your husband you can bring him to your point of view by arguing by appealing whatsoever it is but if if in the end the husband says no this is my opinion you have to give in you have to accept the woman has to accept the decision of the husband except if he is going beyond the limits of the sharia la ta'at ala makhluq fi ma'siyat al khaliq this is the rule no no one among the makhluq among the creatures will be obeyed in anything in which there is some disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala the creator he is the absolute he deserves the absolute obedience total obedience but within the limits of the obedience of obedience of allah you have to obey the women have to obey their husbands the children have to obey their parents the subordinates have to obey their bosses the general public has to obey the rulers and so on there is obedience there can be no social order without obedience but there is a limit to the obedience in islamic society within the limits of the sharia nobody can demand obedience total obedience irrespective of the limits of the sharia no then he becomes a god himself it is shirk it becomes associating someone equal and partner to allah subhanahu wa taala qanitatun hafizatun lil ghaib and they are who guard in the absence or in the secret the unseen i will let you know what does it mean there is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hafizatun lil ghaib bima hafiz allah which allah subhanahu wa taala has guarded there is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which says which is the best wife what are the qualities of best wife and he said the best wife is the one who pleases you when you see her who obeys your orders number 2 qanitatun and who guards your property her and her own honor in your absence from home she is the custodian of your property your mal your belonging at home you have gone to out to work now she is the custodian she has to guard your property number 2 when she has agreed to be a wife to you now her honor and chastity is also a trust with her it is your property now you have the right the conjugal rights you have over her so actually this is also a trust she has to guard it half is at ul lil ghaib she has to guard her own honor because now that belongs to the husband she has agreed 
to be a wife to that person and the property that is in her custody in the absence of the man who is going out for work فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب بما حفظ الله واللاتي تخافون نشوذهن as for those about whom you fear insubordination نشوز she wants to go her own way not obey you may like it or dislike it i have to do it if that is the attitude now what to do واللاتي تخافون نشوذهن فعزوهن number 1 admonish them try to persuade them to mend their ways wajruhunna fil mazajih number 2 leave them alone in their beds don't have any relationship any sexual relationship with them keep them keep yourself away from their beds or keep them away from your beds and even if is not if this is not sufficient wadribuhunna you can beat them also Now these are the words of Allah. I can't say anything. Maybe it is not palatable for the Western people, Western society. But if you want to keep a discipline, the right of punishment should be there. Otherwise, there can be no discipline. There can be no order. The punishment should be there. This house, this family, is the institution, basic unit of this society. Whatever will be in this basic unit. it will spread to the whole of this society if there is anarchy in discipline the whole society will become anarchist and without any discipline loose if there is discipline in this in the family then the whole society will be disciplined or organized so these are the three words fa'izuhunna admonish them wahjuruhunna fil mazajih number 2 keep away from them leave them alone in their beds wadribuhunna and you can beat also but the prophet said don't slap her don't inflict anything on her body that leaves some you know effect permanent effect these are the cautions that you have to do to to today and observe but ribuhunna fainatanakum but now if they mend their ways and now if they are ready to obey you fala tabu alayhinna sabila now don't try to find lame excuses to punish them more and more only till such time that they have mended their attitude you can give these three types of punishments inna allah kana al aliyan kabira verily allah is exalted one and the greatest because he is the exalted one if you are doing it wrongfully to your wives allah subhanahu wa taala will take you to task you are also answerable as you have to keep the discipline in your family allah wants to keep the discipline in the whole of humanity So you will be punished. You will be answerable to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala.